here, okay? I can also sit up here, switch that into a guillotine choke, arm in, arm out, doesn't matter. That's the wrist on the throat, okay? Maybe even an arm triangle choke from the bottom. You don't see this one too common anymore. But back in the day, Jeremy Horn got Chuck Liddell choked unconscious with that one. Uh, triangle. Different ways of setting it up. And the guard, basically it's a, a head, a arm, and a head. Okay, here. There's a triangle choke from guard. Occasionally, you won't see it too common nowadays because everyone knows grappling and will defend. You got your arm bar. Okay, here. And then I can go here or finish it by taking over to this way. There's your basic arm bar. Those are your most common submissions from the back. Inside the guard, okay, there's not a lot we can do other than uh, old school can opener. Now, guys, I can't open to land all those. But old Mark Coleman, uh, Mark Kerr, neck crank right there, can choke him out. But now you'll see, guys, pull it to make the guy uncomfortable, and as he pulls his head backwards, they go into the elbow. From in the half guard, you can always go right to the heel hook. Okay, heel hook's the most dangerous move if you're not a grappler. Don't mess with this one on your buddies. No pain until it explodes the whole ACL, MCL. Okay? Um, occasionally, guys won't give up position to MMA nowadays unless, um, like GSP will go for leg locks in the last 30 seconds of the round. So here, I can go for a spin around knee bar. And then here, I'm attacking the knee bar with one joint, two legs on one, just like an arm bar. More common to see those on bottom, stand up. If all legs starts punching down at me, you know, I'm defending here, no things to keep on your feet. Here, in this kind of situation, the guy will release the leg through, chop down, and go for the heel hook. So, or for the knee bar. You'll see that in this also, this bombing position as well. You guys bombing here on me, you can under here. You can take the knee bar. From side mount, once you pass the half guard, you want it back? From side mount, you got a top wrist lock, Americana paintbrush here. There's your lock there. Get lifting the elbow, working against the elbow joint, and a little bit of the shoulder. Opposite way, double wrist lock and catch wrestling, or in Jiu Jitsu known as the Kamara Black. Okay, good old fashioned pressure on the throat, still works. Okay, if I get his behind her, most common you're gonna see is the rear naked choke. Go around so you get a good angle. Rear naked choke. No. Relax, relax, see you. Or short choke. That's on the throat, the rear naked's on the arteries. So those are your most common submissions. There's other leg locks, there's, there's tons of neck cranks, there's umma plot, there's, there's, there's all kinds of stuff, but those are your most common highest percentage submissions. So I hope you appreciate this guy. Go to thecombatsystem.com. Thanks guys. I'm going to go over some real basics because i got two new beginners to grapplers in class. So going over some basic uh, choke, rear naked choke, short choke, just some uh, whatever I feel like doing. Some basics, okay? So learn about the chokes. But important stuff to know. Relax. Relax your shoulders. I'm just going to do this from my knees, then I'll do it with the hooks then, okay? Just old Japanese style learning the chokes. Rear naked choke. Two types of chokes. Arterial and throw. Rear naked choke is supposed to be arterial. Okay, this is not how to do the choke. This is uh, pro wrestling. Uh, tap out, you're hurting. Uh, okay, that's pro wrestling. Okay, look at all the space in my arms. Get closer, just get on my arms. Where you can zoom in. There's a zoom on it, too. Okay, see all the space in here? You don't want a lot of space. This is what bouncers do that don't know what they're doing, okay? And roid heads, and, and this is, you know, pro wrestling. Hand on top things too because his defense is to peel the hand off. They're two on one on the hands. A good choke is you're gonna take the hand and dig deep. Dig your hand in like a knife, dig deep and put your elbow to the front of his neck. Okay? Then you're gonna get your shoulder as deep as you can. 
And then you're going to weave the hand in behind his head. That's step one, really. Step two is going to be to compress your elbows together. And see, he already tapped out. I didn't even finish the third part that I wore if I was in a fight, MMA or street, whatever. Step one, in deep. Grab your own shoulder, weave in. Get behind his head. You can make a fist or go here. Don't do this because you're going to push his head farther forward if you turn your hand sideways. Okay, and it's going to make it tighter and harder for him to grab. If I'm up here, go ahead and peel my hands off. Grab my, yeah, get both your hands up there. Now he's got a two-on-one. That's the defense to a rear naked choke. A lot of times you'll see in UFC because it's hard to get behind the head with MMA gloves on. So I want to hide this behind his head. Okay. Step two is going to be to pinch your elbows together. And see, he's already tapping. I put a lot of pressure on you, right? Okay. Slowly, I'm going to push his head forward and pull this wrist in. But my elbows weren't together. In reality, Put your elbows together first, always, because that's structural, before you use any kind of flexation because your arms burn out with lactic acid. Here, put your elbow tips together, and then here. I'm going to compress his head down as I pop this wrist in. Without him, instead of here, I'm going to do this to finish off. One elbow behind for leverage, and this one peels back and have my hand by here. Here, behind his back for leverage. And this one pulls back. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just do it from the side here so you get a different view. And pinch your elbows here. Here. Arterial choke police style in case you need to access firearms cuff. Okay. One handed, I gotta punch somebody else here. Okay, so there's different kinds of chokes. Now going to more advanced. Let's pull this way. Oh, yeah. I started with the Marcello here. Okay, if I grab him here in the Marcello, the lasso, you usually will peel the whatever hand's on top up. Do I peel my hand up? He goes there. This one's free to go right to the choke. And that, there's a, where I get a lot of guys with the one hand choke. Not a lot of guys do that. Guys. So if I'm here in a Marcello hold, lasso hold, maybe I'm being mean and compressing my fist in his solar plex. Okay, I'm keeping up by him. He peels that off. I go here and go right to the choke. If I can get in here and trap his wrist, for me to do that or to set up a rear naked, okay, I can peel this down. I can put the foot over BJ Penn style, work my chokes from there. If I'm having trouble choking him because he's pinching on the elbow down and he's got good hand control, two on one, grab my wrist or pinch my your hand down here, he's doing this. I can take my lead hook out, okay, and go to the exorcist. I take this foot out, I have a video just on it, kick the butterfly, go to like a face crank position, kick the butterfly to the other side, then keep the neck where it is, and do a nasty spine lock. So look up the exorcist video. My version of Boss Rutan's exorcist. Get a lot of guys with that too, because if we're naked, everyone's got the defense down, especially if they have MMA gloves on. So hopefully that teaches you guys a little about, about chokes. Please subscribe to my YouTube page, Dan the Wolfman 1. You know, if I'm really fighting, I'm going to have everything super tight. I'm going to put it in, weave it in all sneaky. I'm going to have my head back here. I'm going to pinch those elbows and compress. You don't want this kind of space. You want here and then take up the space. Take up that space. His neck's going to be in there. You don't want his neck, you want to comprise around him. You don't want it to have any space. And real quick positioning and submission drill. Okay, just really fast. I'm not going to explain everything. I'm going to start with the guy's guard, cross your ankles. You've got bicep control, pinning his elbows, pinning his hips with your elbows. This is always a good posture drill. Knees up in the pocket, okay? And one here low or we're up high. But control him with the hips. That doesn't matter if he's a black belt. He can't, he can't even spin his hips if you always have good position locking. Okay, pass me in the butt. Posture sideways, look to pass knee to the mat. Here, head and arm, look to pass to side mount. From there, we're going to try and get the arm in any kind of key lock, Kimura lock, uh, any kind of lock that is similar to an Americana or a top wrist lock here. Position in tight if you want to do a traditional stuff. Paint it on the mat if you want to do a traditional style. Uh, roller lock it this way if you don't want to do a traditional style, more catch wrestling style. Okay, once you get better in cue. Then you're going to Pop that over, okay? And sometimes you can go right to an arm triangle, or we'll just do windshield. Uh, maybe you're right here, we'll do windshield wiper. 
neck crank here, or if you end up on this side, that means arm triangle, okay, and you're going to hop across, legs up high so you don't get caught in her, okay, and then hip down, arm triangle choke. From arm triangle choke, you're going to go from here to head and arm, okay, get regular position, head and arm control, knee across the belly, shin across the belly, mount. Okay, then we're going to smack, 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 make them cover up. So it's MMA major. Then you're going to go to S mount. Okay, here, knee tight to the head, heel in. Okay, I'm not trying to teach all these techniques now. You can look at other videos. Okay, here, maybe I got a pretzel because that's where you went. So I'm just going to take it in the drill. If something's given, train it and take it. You're going to hook in here, hook inside the leg, and go for an S mount arm bar leaning forward so you don't give up position. Get the tap out. Let's say you miss it, you go back to mount, you pound the guy again, he's going to turn the back. Okay, and give up the back control. Okay, so turn the back, I'm gonna put the hooks in, okay, push up to your knees, you try and get out, I'm gonna put the hooks in, flat them out, pull up on the head, slip the choke in, and tap them out. Alright? Okay, one more time. Okay, so in the drill, if something uh, active and alive comes, you, you take it. Okay? So just a warm up drill. I want to get positional control. Here, here, posture, go through, do whatever kind of passes the back step or double knee through. Okay, here, set up the trap, start working on this arm. See if you can get a yeah, come on that time. I'll take the come on. Okay, double wrist lock, downward double wrist lock. Maybe it goes on the top here. Take a roller lock. See how I got that? I'm not traditionally grabbing it, I'm just learning the locks. Okay, pop this over. Okay, go to an arm triangle, or there might be even a windshield wiper neck crank style there. Oh, look at that foot, he's giving you a catch ankle lock there. Go to mount, got a triangle. Okay, from mount, or with shin stretch, or with regular side mount, hip down on the balls of your feet, either way. Switch, switch. Okay, you can work from here, go to mount. Okay, punch, 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 punch. That's mount. Here, hook. Arm bar there. Okay, let's say you miss it, then then you still got position. Back to mount. Hit him. Give your big back. Okay, he goes here. Get ready to slide the hooks in. Put the hooks in. Stretch them out. Lift them up. Short choke. Your naked choke. Whatever you get. Okay. I'll go through it again. Maybe something else will come up. Okay, so just a positional and submission flow drill. Okay. And here. Looking to pass. Okay. Right back. I'll take what's up. I'm trying to go. Okay. Now. Now I got that arm. Okay. Exorcist uh, neck crank, my version there. That Aoki one with the Dream 17. So, you see, I just kind of floated made up as I go along. Good thing to do with your students, you know, to warm up for class. Alright, thanks. Hey guys, Dan Wolfman here at Kamenuri Jojo, the newly expanded Kamenuri Dojo. Ryan Bo, a longtime fighter in Japan, his dojo in um, Grand Rapids, Michigan. I thank him for having me out. I'm going to show a few leg locks. Uh, right now, I might do one by one, I might do them all together. Okay, here's a basic heel hook setup that people just kind of forget about. As you're doing a basic number one successful highest percentage guard pass, which is some variation of knees in the pocket, bicep control, knee in the butt, posture up, break, knee through to the mat, staple, leg staple. From the leg staple position, guys usually go head and arm and finish with the pass. But instead of doing that, sometimes at the end of the round, 30 seconds left, we're going to grab a tournament MMA. Last 30 seconds, go to tap the guy with GSP in against Fitch. Here, kick this leg over, and you're already in your two on two on one position. Uh, final watch. Here. Slowly take the heel to the opposite side. Heel hooks are very dangerous. Here's your heel hook setting. Maybe we end up in a scramble a little bit. We in here tight two on one, feet in the stump. I'm still, I got the nice 90 bend in the leg. Here's my heel hook position. 
Yeah. Of course, if you have a nice position, especially with feet on the stomach, you can always do things like the toe press. The pressures with my feet in the stomach, back arch. I tap people sometimes just, just in here. Okay, see there's not even a lock. There's a lock with my shoulder, my armpit. If you wanted, um, against experienced guys, very slow with this, do the steering wheel, sambo style, toe press, heel hook. What do you want to rip it off, pancreas style? Very dangerous. So, just an easy setup to do from a basic pack. You know, elbow tight, stopping all this hip movement, whatever. Knee and open up posture, break this down, knee through. Guys usually then go either pass this way or double knee through pass. Instead of going there, take this and tap them out. Tight two on one position, tight in here. Whether the foot's in, or you end up foot out. Here. I like both those positions. Here. Toes up the butt. Um, so there is the heel hook set up from your basic knee through knee staple right pass position. Okay, that's it for that. Then we'll open because checking it out. Okay guys, next is the half guard lockdown destroyer, aka the Indian Death Lock. If you guy got a guy who plays a lot of lockdown half guard, go ahead and tap them out or at least open them up so you can get the pass. So here's a submission ankle lock from there and or a pass. All right? So if a guy's got a lockdown on you and he's being tired and you're having trouble passing whatever, all you do is hop your foot up into his butt and, and he's already tapping. Watch what happens is I rock him backwards. Here it gets worse. You press on the knees and he taps out. Most guys are surprised with this and you can actually tap them out. Okay, so again, I'm going to hop my right foot, whatever leg is locked down, towards his butt and posture backwards. Here, up, posture back. I'm going to push and get the tap out. If he manages to unlock his legs while you're doing this, that's fine. You just go ahead and pass. At least it gave you the pass. So here's the Indian death lock. It, it could be really nasty if I left up all the way, even in the street, if I did a back bump, I could snap his knees and hips and all kinds of stuff. So here, get some inside control for his neck, so he can posture up, jump up, here, push on the legs, and there's a nice submission right there. Alright, there you go. Try that out, next time you have trouble passing, the guy's locked down. Okay, today we're going to do some catch wrestling again, Facebook Elite Trend uh, Apparel, pretty cool shirt. Alright, come on in here. Do some catch wrestling stuff. Alright, go to your back. Okay, we're going to talk, number one, catch wrestling, you're always heavy on top. You're riding heavy, okay? I'm with little guys today, so I might not be riding super heavy and giving a little break, but in reality, in competition, in live grappling, I would be. If he grabs, grab your shorts. In MMA now, this is allowed in a lot of grappling tournaments. He can grab his shorts or his body fat or just keep the hand tight to that hip bone. It's hard to get around trying to grab more in the side. Can you grab? Yeah. So he's blocking the Kimura. So I'm in here on a Kimura. And I'm having trouble ripping a regular Kimura. What you can do is replace your right hand with your left hand, trap in here, and go to a catch wrestling key lock. Go in here, grab your own behind your elbow, Grab behind your elbow with both hands, okay, like a snake choke almost, okay, and then you're going to sit out on the far side of his head, here, get ready to tap, and then rotate here, all right? Okay, so you, this is really important, guys. Everyone blocks the Kimura that way. By grip, putting the hand in front of the hip bone, it's hard to just to put the hip, it's hard to get past that hip bone sometimes. Or he's grabbing here, even if I step over the head. So you're, you're in here and you're having trouble ripping it out. Take this hand, replace your right hand with your left, grab in here. You can actually keep that if you want, or take both out and grab behind your arm. Okay, pinch everything tight, and now I'm going to sit out around his head. Sit my weight back on his face, and then rotate his shoulder. Remember, you're taking the hand to the back of the head on a Kimura. Regular Kimura, I have a video on. It's here, clear the hip bump. And then take it short banana in the back of the head. 
Okay, he's pretty flexible. You don't take it out, just look how flexible he is. And you don't take it up, look how flexible he is. You combine the motions, banana the back of the head. That's the same motion you're gonna do on a key lock. And here, get up, back. Here, grab, sit out, and then rotate. One more time. Get a different angle. Put on here. You know how stretch it like a rubber band, how to keep things taut. You don't necessarily need it. Okay, if you want to be more supposedly technical, I could do this. That's just an easy helper reminder to teach beginners. But you can rotate it out, and it adds more pressure. Doesn't it? More pressure on the floor. Okay, so here, and then stack it and pull it. Same thing here. A lot of times I'll ride heavy. Catch wrestling's about riding heavy. I'll put the trap up here. Whether I'm bashing him in the face or not. So then I'm going to wait for him to try and get his arm out. I'm trying to get your arm out. Uh, there's a trap there. I might trap from like a Tom Sao and Wing Chun here. Come to this. Sit out. And you're going to pull his head and do a separation. Okay. One more time. One more time. Here, maybe I'm sitting on the trap. Okay, and as he does this, we're riding his throat. I'm grinding him. I'm being heavy. Oh, there's right there. Grab right here. I can sit out to do a separation. You'll see the same style thing I did in my tricky north south chicken wings. Okay, look at look at that video. Um, okay, brush weird separation from the north south position or from side mount that you can do. All right, uh, switch up for him to some neck pain. Thank you. All right, next. Give you guys a little break. In side mount, we're going to be riding heavy, grinding the guy, pushing on his face, grinding elbows face down. If you're talking mean self-defense, you're talking catch wrestling, that's not even gouging and thumbs and pressure points, okay? I'm just talking being heavy on the guy. From, more, from side mount, guys, you're all taught head and arm anyway, jiu-jitsu style. Okay, you're either tight with your knees or maybe you're being heavy with one leg back. Put your heavy chest to chest. Sink your weight over him like a sack of rice. It's very important. But it's very easy to go from there to...